Hi guys, if you are new here, my name is Katie and I am a first year teacher in the Bay Area. Today I thought that I would kind of walk you guys through how I make my lessons and kind of the format of like how I plan for a class period. A little background, I am a high school math teacher and so it's a little bit different than what we see a lot on YouTube of like elementary or like primary teachers. Here I'm just teaching math and I have a really short window of time. I have to get really creative and really strategic with how I teach it and so I thought it'd be kind of fun to bring you guys along with that. I also have been getting a lot of comments on my videos and on my Instagram asking if I can make um, kind of a walk along video of how I create a lesson and I'm about to create a lesson that I will be doing later on in the week and so I thought this is the perfect time I'll kind of sit down with you guys and walk through like how I do it and what I do to be honest like I said it's my first year so I don't fully know what I'm doing this has just been what has worked for me I think I've like kind of gotten in some sort of a rhythm I'm sure I'll look back at this video in a couple years and be like yeah Katie you had no idea what you were doing but I like to think at least I kind of have an idea of what I'm doing at least right now also my school is fully distance learning we've never gone back to school since August we've been distance learning and we have haven't changed so my students and myself honestly have gotten the hang of distance learning this is something I'm comfortable with it's something I think the students are now comfortable with now our class periods are very short last trimester they were only 45 minutes long and we only got to see the students two times a week it was so short 45 minutes two times a week just doesn't really allow for a lot of flexibility. So I have to be like really diligent and really make sure that I'm planning and I'm getting everything that I need to get in. Now this trimester, our school tweaked it like a little bit and they added eight more minutes to each class. So now our classes are a whopping 53 minutes. So yeah, that's kind of like all the background stuff that I can give you. I'm going to head over to my desk over there and we can kind of start walking through the lesson. I'm not really sure how this is gonna work, but We'll just bring you along, vlog style, because that's what I do best, I think. Let's go. Okay, hmm, how do I want to do this? Okay, so I know this is kind of a weird angle, but this is kind of what we're working with. So the first thing that I do is I pull up my pacing guide. So basically I teach algebra one and geometry. I got really lucky that the periods that I teach algebra and the periods that I teach geometry are on separate days because my school does a block schedule. The algebra one teachers and the geometry teachers have gotten together and they made a pacing guide. Obviously they're separate. And so what I did is I made my own version of this and kind of combined it together. I don't know if you guys do this. Let me know if you guys do this. Like in my head, geometry is green. I don't know what it is. Geometry is green and algebra one is red and algebra two is blue. Like in my head, if I had to like correlate them with the color, that is what it is. So anyway, I kind of just went with that and you can see that there's like different colors on here. So this, this row right here is our morning support section where we don't teach. We teach in the afternoon, but the morning is like an individual support, preps, meetings, working with students one-on-one. -on -one stuff like that. Everything that is green is geometry and everything that is red is algebra. So currently I am prepping for Thursday, which will be my algebra lesson. What I like to do, again, I pull up my pacing guide and I see what section we're supposed to be on. We are gonna be on section 6.1. So then I will whip out the textbook and my student journal. Okay, so I have out the teacher's edition of the textbook and the student journal that the students have. Basically, if I was in person, I would be doing interactive notebooks. I really like interactive notebooks. I think that they're really like beneficial for students, but because I'm not in person and I don't have the ability to have shared resources, we are resulting to the textbook that the school gave, which also came with a student journal. And so basically this journal is a mix of like work problems, but also notes and vocab. We use Big Ideas Math. They have a full online system where you can assign homework and tests and everything. And so we just keep it pretty generic using the Big Ideas system. What I like to do again, I'll flip to the section that we're learning, duh. Okay, so I know that you can't see everything, but what I do is I then go through the student journal and decide what like sections, what is going on? The way I teach my lessons is actually through my iPad. 
So here's my iPad. I project my iPad screen onto my Google Meet, basically through the app called GoodNotes, which I did have to pay for. I think it was like four or five dollars. Isn't it so weird? I don't know, let me know guys. Isn't it so weird that if something's like four dollars at the store, we would be like, oh my God. So cheap. Something's four dollars on the app store. You're like, oh my gosh, it's so expensive. It's just kind of funny because that's like our mindset. So I had to get over that mindset and just buy the dang app anyway so what i do is i actually have a digital version of my student journal and i'll put the digital version onto my ipad and so i'm digitally going through and taking notes with the students live but before that i have all my notes taken in this journal so they're not physically seeing this journal they're seeing the digital copy on my ipad so what I like to do is I go through and I like do the workbook and I decide what's important for me to talk about what's not important. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I have gone through and answered, you can see it's like all written, and answered every problem. Now what I like to do is kind of like go through and highlight or circle what I think is the most important. So I kind of just go through with a highlighter, circle the things that I know I'm going to have to talk about on my iPad while I'm teaching the student. <music> Okay, so after I have done that, this is like the bulk of the lesson. Like this is where I'll probably be spending about 30, 35 minutes like teaching and talking and walking through it. What students have told me they really like is just keeping it all in the same workbook. Everything is here, not getting too fancy with it. I think in distance learning, it's really easy to want to use a lot of like different materials and like websites, and applications and programs. However, that just gets confusing for students. Like now they have 12 different things where they can find their assignments or what they're doing or where their notes are. It might not be the most engaging thing, but I've realized that it's way simpler to keep it all in here than for me to try to incorporate all these other things. With that being said though, I do try to have something fun in every single lesson. This is gonna be the bulk of the lesson, but what I need to do now is make my warm up, my announcements, like the beginning portion of the class, and then I also need to make the end portion of the class, maybe if I want to play a game. What I do now is I will make my warm up. Going to bring you back around so you can see my computer and we will make the warm up. Let's go. So I made these welcome slides on Canva. If you guys have never used Canva before, I really recommend it. Um, basically you can just create like a whole bunch of creative flyers and pictures and different things like that. So basically I made this presentation um, and I just think it's really cute. I put it as the background on my um, slides. So this first one says the supplies needed and what they'll need today will be their pen and their pencil and their student journal. That's all they're gonna need. So the warm up changes. Sometimes it's like a question that I ask them, like, oh, what's your favorite color? Sometimes it is a math related question. So it could be a review from last chapter or something that we're doing today. And I'm kind of front loading them with the information. Sometimes it is a riddle or like a game. Today though, because it is the first lesson, I kind of want to see where they're at. I'm going to do a basic warm up of exponents because we're learning about exponents today. So now I have my warm up made and basically I just make these up. Like I'm not like pulling them from anywhere. I'm just making them up. And then I'll go into the next slide, which is an announcement slide. Again, I made this slide as well. Basically, this is just where I'm going to put all of the announcements that I have to tell them for the day. So basically that's like due dates or specific things that they have coming up, different things like that. <laughs> All right, so now that I have the announcements made, I'll also input their agenda that exactly lies out what they're doing that week with the schedule. This is how my agendas are laid out. Again, I made the format on Canva. So basically I'll just copy this slide 
and input it into my welcome slide. This is what it ends up looking like. It just shows them exactly the outline of what the week looks like. Okay, so now I made my work for before class and now I need it to make a game or something for the end of class. Because it is the very first day of like actual teaching, I'm going to have them play a Kahoot. Kids love Kahoot. And so I'm going to make a Kahoot now. Okay, if you've never heard of Kahoot, it seriously is like the best game ever. Basically, you can create your own cahoots they're kind of like quizzes students log in with a code and they answer them really quickly with like on their phones it's kind of like a trivia and the students love it like middle school high school students you start playing kahoot and they are like let's flipping go i just make a lot of them because kids love it so what is stopping me from making a lot of them i don't make any of my cahoots actual questions that they have to stop and solve because they're timed and i don't think it's very equitable and fair so my cahoots consist of questions like vocab or terms that you can answer quickly they also are direct questions from what we learned so i do that to make sure that students are following along i'll say what's the answer to number six and if students were following along and doing the work in their student journal as i was doing it they'll be able to answer the kahoot if they weren't then they won't be able to answer the kahoot and it kind of makes the students do it so that when they do play a kahoot they are ready and i'll also do questions like announcements and it'll be something like what day is our test just to make sure that students know our test is next monday or something like that like i'll do a question kind of like that lastly i'll do questions that are like fun questions so i'll ask something like what's miss johnson's favorite food or sometimes I'll ask questions about specific students in the class. Sometimes I'll do trivia about the school we go to, like what year was our high school founded? So I am going to make my Kahoot right now. All right, so I finished making the Kahoot. Basically, we are done with the format of the day. Last thing I do to prep for the lesson is I put their homework in as an assignment. Like I mentioned before, we use Big Ideas as our textbook, and so they have a great online program, and that's where all of their homework comes from and is assigned. And I make sure that every problem that I assign on the homework is something that we went over because I don't think it's very fair to like give them a homework problem that we never did. And I feel like that happens a lot in math. Like I remember being a student and feeling like, oh yeah, I got it super easy in class. And then you go and you do it on your own and you're like, what the heck? So I try to just make sure that it is like all synced up. Yeah. So that is pretty much all that I have left to do. And then I will be all prepped and planned. All right, so basically that is how I prep and plan. Now, obviously it changes. That was a basic lesson. Sometimes um, I won't play a game. Sometimes I do play a game. Sometimes we watch a video. Sometimes we don't. There are so many different ways that I prep and I plan. And I kind of just base it off of the lesson of what I think I would benefit from learning as a student. And so I really try and put myself in the mindset of a student every time I make a lesson. Yeah, that is basically how I do it. Again, like I said, I'm no professional, um, but this is kind of what has worked for me. And I kind of get through it pretty fast. It took me about an hour to do it all. And sometimes it goes even faster because I'm not talking to you guys. Um, I try to have it planned the day before, but sometimes it just happens where the morning of I'm planning for it. And that is just, teacher life. So that is how I prep and I create lessons. I hope that this was like easy for you guys to follow. If it was beneficial, I seriously don't know, but I wanted to make this for you guys. Go ahead and comment down below more video ideas that you guys have. That's about all I have for you guys today. I hope that you guys enjoyed and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.